Round two, I'm going to play first again. Uh, I don't like the one lander. Still don't like the one lander. Like this, like this one lander even less. Well, our opponent also mulligans, but we got to go to five. Oof, that is really ugly. I'm gonna keep it. Bottom anything. It's not a mountain. Well, that's good. All right. Off to the races. All right. Wisely cracking it right away. We're actually going to play the second Blood Mad here instead of the duelist because I want to get by this gargoyle with the vampire so I can buff it up stitchwing scab sure so well I guess that works So, we've got some options here. I think I'm actually going to play the Duelist. And I think I'd still rather offer the trade with the Stitchwing Scab. I could attack with both, but I think I would prefer to... Just offer the duelist. Because I have two tricks in my hand, so I'd rather utilize those. I feel like it's too easy of a block for him on the Blood Mad Vampire, but this block I'm more okay with. I'll I'll use Duelist to make him get rid of two more cards to bring back the Stitchwing Scab. Like, I'm okay with that. And I have tricks to get by the gargoyle. As well as, like, a bunch of removal spells. Not that I don't have removal spells for Stitchwing Scab, either. I think another thing is, like, he could actually attack me with Stitchwing Scab. Especially if he has a, a good follow-up play here. Oh. Scabs for days. I see. Well, that works, I guess. So I can attack with Blood Mad and use Uncaged Fury? I'd probably do that. So Uncaged Fury can push more damage through, but... I want to get by a creature this turn and use Geist Blast on his other creature on his turn, or on my next turn, I should say. And he can bring these back, but they come back tapped. And it does cost him two cards, like I said. So Uncaged Fury does let you push through a lot of damage with Rush of Adrenaline, but I'm not sure if that's the way I'm going to have to win here. Basically, I just have to outdraw my opponent. Like, I wouldn't mind if he just paid a blue and a black and discarded two and brought back the Stitchwing Scab. I think that's fine. Ghoul Steed, I still trade for it, so I'm okay there too. He's got he's got a lot of things that recur from graveyard. I will say that's pretty good. Well, that's actually a good draw, so now we wanna go. I think we just wanna go blood sworn, give it haste, and get in there.
We have the grotesque mutation to gain some life back. Alright. I'm glad he's not attacking. All the guys blasts. Alright. All right. So if I offer this trade, what does that do for me? I guess it lets him attack with more stuff next turn, but I just don't think I'm going to be able to deal with ghoul steed later probably i think we probably just trade he's got a bunch of stuff in his graveyard he's, he's gonna have to discard all sorts of cards to bring him back and i think we actually kill the i want him to invest the mana in the gargoyle so i think we're just gonna kill the geist here Ooh, aristocrat. Well, I do love aristocrat. No use giving it haste here. But I can buff my blood sworn at some point. Certainly wouldn't hurt if he invested his mana in the gargoyle. Or played a Jace, jeez. Hmm. So I can kill Jace. It's gonna come at a cost, but cost we gotta be willing to pay here. So where does that what does that mean? I think that means I have to The question is would I rather trade I think I gotta actually trade my aristocrat. Which I don't love. But I think it is what we're going to trade. Because I think I kind of need the Geist Blast for the Gargoyle or a Stitchwing Scab. So basically I have to sack our own Aristocrat. Debuff our Bloodsworn. Well, that's actually not a bad draw either. So now we attack Jace. And mutation or guy. All right. Invested quite a bit there, but I did have to kill Jace because he can just bounce all day. I wanted to use that mutation on my opponent's face, but no such luck. So he does have all sorts of discard outlets. We have two removal spells, which is good. We have one threat, though, so kind of hope this threat uh, carries pretty hard for us. No play, sure. 
Hey, skeleton. Oh, man. Just got rid of aristocrat, though. All right, so now we just Geist Blast. Get our damage in. Yeah, I guess we play the Skeleton. Might be a good discard outlet for the... Uh, Air of Falcon Wrath, but it's all right. Where's our curve stop? Curve stops at, I guess, curve never stops because it burned from within. I miss my aristocrat. Darn you, Jace. We're going to take the two. I'm probably going to have to use my inner struggle, so I'd like the opportunity to get an extra point of damage in with the skeleton. I can't do anything about that. We didn't get any dual shots either, I just realized. Hmm. It's a bit of a problem. All right. Well, now I can't bring the scab back, so I guess that's good. Hmm. So I might as well block. Well, actually, no. I guess I'm going to be using my mana, and it keeps the corpse trawler at bay at least. Well, neonate's not the worst, but. I guess we get to play it, too. Let's just kill this guy. Get in with Bloodsworn. Play a land. Play a Neonate. Pass. So, from under the floorboards, I can get three zombies plus draw a card if I sacrifice the Neonate, which I might as well do at this point. I don't have any vampire synergies left. Uh, and I'm trying to dig towards burn from within, right? Yes. Also, have Fiery Temper. I'm out of Geist Blast. I am out of Grotesque Mutations. I do have Air of Falcon Wrath. So, I have some good draws here. I have at least four good draws. I even... I actually think Dance with Devils would be a pretty good draw here, too. This is a spot where it's really nice when you got these, like, X1s that you're trying to deal with. And he's just trying to bank as hard as he can on that Stitchwing Scab. No attacks this time. Oh, perfect. All right, so we get to just dead weight here. Keep swinging with the Bloodsworn. He's out of cards, so he's got to wait a couple turns before he can bring back that scab. And even when he can, it's tapped, so he's got to come up with something better. Um, I guess I can, I can sandbag one land because I may want to discard it to Neonate to dig deeper. Otherwise, if I draw another land, I can start playing lands again. And Burn From Within is lethal at this point, so I guess it doesn't matter. Now Fiery Temper's going to get 
get us closer as well. Accomplice, not a bad draw. I'd still rather discard the land if I had to use a Neonate. But I don't have to use a Neonate, so... Look, we'll just play Accomplice. And pass. Um, so I can use Neonate here to filter, maybe find something. Why not? Otherwise, if I attack with all four, no, I can only deal one at max. Which does not seem great. Let's, let's ditch the Neonate. See if we can't find something better here. Rummage. Nope. Not the rummage we were looking for. So, I guess we're back in chill out mode. I guess I could have just played a land there. Don't really want to trade my Bloodsworn for a Stitchwing Scab since we still have some removal spells left. Although at this point, might just have the removal spell necessary to get there. Nope. So, what am I trying to draw now? So I can draw Dance with Devils, Burn from Within, from under the floorboards, which I can't profitably use anymore, unfortunately, off the Neonate. But I was trying to draw into something that would get us there, you know? Like, even a Rush of Adrenaline would have gotten us there. We actually had quite a few draws, right? Rush, Fiery Tempered, Dance with Devils, from under the floorboards, Burn from Within. I'd say four cards that we're drawing towards with 17 cards left in the deck is... Not too shabby, so I guess we still have to chill out. He's going to start swinging at us, though, so it's going to make things a little bit more difficult, but Skeleton holds back some damage. And he certainly can't attack with both Stitchwing Scabs. Ghoulcaller's Accomplice also protects us a little bit. It's even risky to attack with one Stitchwing Scab, but he doesn't know what our removal, what, what kind of removal we have left. Okay, he's getting in there. I think he kind of has to, so I understand why he is. But our blocks actually aren't that terrible. So, basically just block and trade here and take. We do take quite a bit, I guess, but we're going to be able to get the Skeleton back. Okay, so we go accomplice number two, skeleton, and the question is, do I trade my bloodsworn for the stitchwing scab now? Um, it's not like two damage is going to get me there. What would get me there? Rush of Adrenaline would have gotten me there, so I guess we still want to preserve our, our bloodsworn here. He doesn't have lethal on us just yet. He's close, though. And he can't bring back his ghoul steed just yet, either. Alright. Not too intimidated by that. He may have wanted to just I don't know we're probably getting pretty close here I guess there we go got the lethal spell just in the nick of time so I'm glad we held back on the blood sworn But 
To be fair, we did have a lot of outs here. He still has a card in his hand. It could be something. Oh, he did. He drew something relevant. All right. You got us. Right? Bring back skeleton block. That. Three, six, eight. All right. You got it. Almost beat him on a multi five, so I'm pretty proud of that. But, yeah, he got the good stuff. Yeah, I think we're fine. Seems like a very winnable match. Like I said, we almost won on a multi five, which is very telling. Um, I could bring in throttle. I wish, like I said, I kind of wish I had a dual shot here. It'd be very useful here. Um, as is, do I like anything? I don't think so. I don't like our tricks as much if he's got bounce, right? We did only see one bounce spell, but he also has Gone Missing. But Gone Missing doesn't matter. It's basically just compelling deterrence. Which is a good one. He also can leave up mana to return a scab or leave up compelling deterrence, which is pretty good for him. Uh, maybe we swap it. Let's bring a throttle in and cut like a... Uh... I feel like life gain matters less here. I'd rather have the rush for the trample with the Uncage Fury than the life gain. So let's bring in a throttle so I have... Is throttle even good? It's basically a five mana way to deal with his Stitchwing Scab. Which doesn't seem great. Deals with Ghoul Steed. It deals with his 2-4 Investigate. That doesn't seem very good to me. I'm actually going to bring back the trick. I think we might just need to go trick heavy and hope they pay they, they pay off for us. All right, let's try it again. We Like I said, we actually had... We had quite a few lethal things there besides. We did end up drawing the one that would have been lethal had he not had anything. But Burn From Within obviously would have won, won us the game there. Um, would Dance with Devils have done enough? Probably not, I guess. He was at three, so it wouldn't have pushed through enough damage. But Fiery Temper and Burn From Within were both uh, ways to win there. All right. All right, so a bunch of red spells and a two-drop black spell. This hand is very, very, very reliant on red mana, so much so that I'm, I'm kind of tempted to mulligan it. We do, however, have quite a few cheap black spells if we don't draw red mana. I guess I keep then. It sketches me out. I'm a little skeezed out by this hand, but I think I, I'm going to have to accept it. Hope that we see a red mana at some point. All right, Thraben Gargoyle. Oh, there you go. Mission accomplished. So, I'd rather trade. I want to push damage through, so I think we do want to Geist Blast the, uh, the Gargoyle. I guess I can just rush of adrenaline though, but if he leaves up the two mana, that's gonna be a little bit too sketchy. I don't want to deal with compelling deterrence. Not that it's a two for one, but it's enough of a slowdown effect where I'd rather just play a Geist Blast here and be okay with that. Because, like, yeah, if he had Compelling Deterrence, we play a Rush. I guess we could even replay our Accomplice, so it really wouldn't wouldn't have been the end of the world. But we still have Rush now, which is actually good for continuing to push damage through. With, like, uh, Uncaged Fury. We have Inner Struggle now as well for the next creature he plays. All right, so we're just going to nuke that guy. Could exile it, but I kind of want to kill him with burn from within.
We were still a ways away, though, admittedly. But at least we're working towards a goal here, I guess. This looks familiar. And a sanitarium skeleton. So I can exile his scab. But I don't think I want to do that. So neonate's not bad. So I guess the play is swing with accomplice. Um, yeah, we get to just take the trade. I don't have to rush either. I think we need that for later. So I would I would argue a better trade for us since we can just bring it back plus neonate. And we're gonna play land because still working towards that burn from within. I've got some madness outlets. And at this point I guess we can get a nice little from under the floorboards going. Kindly Stranger, sure. He's got two cards left. Neonate number two. Hmm. Not the sexiest place to be. So I can, I guess I pretty much just offer the zombie to the slaughter here. If he's got the compelling deterrence, it's a bit of a bummer, but we don't have to discard, which I guess is good. Hmm, okay. So we do only kill the kindly stranger. But it's still kind of a one-for-one, one, actually, because it was half of another card. I don't think swinging with the Neonate would have been great. He could have just double-blocked that. But I guess in that instance, it would have worked out the same. No, I guess these guys are more useful for their, their rummage effect at this point. Just in case... Like, if I draw a Blood Mad Vampire or a Fiery Temper or a From Under the Floorboards, I get to draw a plus cast those spells, which is pretty nice. We're not in any immediate danger either. It's attacking with Skeleton, which is kind of strange. Oh, well, I wasn't going to discard anything, so I guess that works. Okay. Yeah, skeleton with the stitching scab is going to be pretty tough. We still can do this, but it's going to require timely creature, uh, well placed on Cage Fury, so not loving our odds. Bit surprised we're losing this. This really did feel like a pretty favorable match for us. For the most part. But I feel like we did have to mulligan both times, if that if I'm not mistaken. Alright, well, air is a good draw.
Oh, he has no... Well, maybe I need him to take damage, to be honest. Yeah, I probably do. Asylum Visitor. That might be the first time I've seen the, the value actually... The value actually pay off on that, to be honest. Oh, well, I guess I'm happy he's attacking with everything, but... See what his follow-up is. No play is very bad for us. That makes me assume we're going to have to deal with a... Uh, compelling deterrence here. So he's got lethal and crackback if he uses the stitchwing scab. So I think that means we gotta go. We gotta go for it here. So I can make it eight damage, but I kind of need the geist blast. So we're just gonna deal our six. All right. It's a huge bummer. It's pretty disappointing. But nothing to be done about that one. Needed it pretty bad there. Air Falconrath is still a good draw for us. But I think we're pretty much out of this at this point. I don't see a I don't see a road to recovery now. I don't, I don't see any way to win this. Fiery Temper still doesn't do it. We're actually one land short. So we can't do it with Fiery... Well, now we certainly can't do it. So, hugely disappointing loss. Like I said, it felt like a va just a very favorable matchup. Like, we should not be losing matches where our opponent is losing life to draw cards, you know? That's like so anti what our deck is trying to do. Were our hands that terrible? That's so surprising to me that we lost in such odd manner. Um, I guess the game one we mulled a five, right? And then we almost won anyway. And then game two, we kept a seven card hand that was like, okay, but it wasn't great. Is that basically what happened? I don't know. I'm, I'm confused by how badly we got. We, we just lost to a blue black deck um, that just, like I said, was not super strikingly powerful. It had some good cards in it. It did have the Biting Rain, which is a good tool to use against us, but he didn't even get, like, insane value off that. He killed two one ones. I don't know. A bit surprising, but he got us. So, all right, on to round three.